Hello again. This is video lesson number eight, a continuation of the diabetes blood type series. And this is part seven. This video lesson is specifically for those that are of the blood type O subgroup. So type O's are carbohydrate intolerant. They lack the enzymes required to digest them very well. And that leads to insulin resistance, thyroid dysfunction, and high triglycerides. Type O's are particularly vulnerable to the lectins that are found in grains and legumes, especially wheat. So likewise, they will struggle with metabolizing sugars and the insulin resistance will impair their triglyceride conversion. Edema will often result, that's where they collect fluids around their feet and ankles. Insulin resistance contributes to thyroid regulation issues, so they commonly have hypothyroidism or thyroid issues, which also contributes to their weight gain. It will be very difficult for them to lose weight if wheat or corn is in their diet. Gluten and corn slow the metabolic rate in the type O's, and wheat is a primary roadblock to weight loss. Gluten found in wheat acts on the metabolism to create an opposite effect of the state of ketosis. If you do not have glucose in your bloodstream for your cells to utilize for fuel in the form of glycogen, that compact form of glucose, then it will convert to other forms of fuel as a fuel source, which may include uh, fats, fatty acids, and that will cause your body to go into a state of ketosis, meaning that it's burning something other than glucose, and that can upset your normal metabolic function. So meat, spinach, and broccoli enhance your metabolism. However, when we talk about upsetting your metabol metabolic function, you will have to go into a state of ketosis in order for you to lose weight. You have to burn the fat. That's the only way the fat can be removed from your body. It won't just go away. So type O's should avoid dairy and grains altogether. They do not tolerate certain legumes, especially kidney beans, navy beans, and peanuts. They do not tolerate gluten well at all. In type O's, the lectins in the legumes, in the beans, especially lentil beans, navy beans, and kidney beans, can cause deposits in your muscle tissues that make them more alkaline, which means opposite of acidic, and that limits their efficiency during uh, physical activity. So vegetables from the brassica family, which includes things like cabbage, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, and mustard greens, will inhibit their thyroid function, and they should be eliminated totally from their diet. So there are no limitations in the frequency of eating red meat, especially very lean red meat, chicken, especially if it's skinless, turkey, or fish for type O's. Higher grades are necessary if you're very active, including vigorous exercise. Portion size should be kept to less than six to eight ounces in size per serving. A balance of meat, fruit, and vegetables is necessary in order for you to control your pH, the acidity of your body, and that is a very important thing to properly maintain. Eggs are a poor protein source for type O's. Caucasians can eat up to four, day, four eggs per week. Asians can eat five per week. Afri African Americans should not eat any eggs. Type O's should eliminate all dairy from their diet. Care must be taken to ensure that adequate amounts of calcium then are supplied by the diet, even in the form of, of uh, supplements. You should get between 1,000 and 1,200 milligrams per day in order to offset the loss of calcium that you would otherwise get from dairy in your diet. Type O's respond well to oils of several types, especially extra virgin olive oil and flax seed oil. Oil benefit the elimination process in the intestines because it lubricates, and type O's should avoid most nuts because of their, their very high fat content, especially if your weight loss is an issue. Walnuts are an exception. Various seeds like chia, flax, and pumpkin are very beneficial. Chia will give you all eight of the essential amino acids that you need to get from your diet because your body can't produce them, but most certainly does need them. So nuts may cause digestive issues in type O's. Not all, but many. All vegetables that are high in vitamin K, which many of them are, are good choices for type O's. 
vitamin K serves to aid in the clotting process in your body if you become injured. Blood type influences one of the most important clotting factors, which is called factor 8. Blood type O is deficient in that very important factor. They are less likely to form blood clots. They may lose more blood than other types when they're injured, especially type O secretors. Alfalfa sprouts will irritate the digestive tract and it will aggravate hypersensitivity issues. Molds that can be found in certain mushrooms like shiitake and fermented foods like olives can trigger an allergic reaction in type O's. So type O's are inclined to develop arthritis from eating nightshade foods, especially the potatoes, the tomatoes, hot peppers, eggplants, uh, peppers like bell peppers, pimentos, paprika, cayenne, and Tabasco sauce, because their lectins form deposits in their joint tissues. So the alkaloids impact nerve muscle function, digestive function, and compromise joint function. Tomatoes are a special case though. They contain powerful lectins, but they will uh, agglutinate in all other blood types, but not in the type O's. So tomatoes are fair game for type O's. Fruits that have very dark pigment, that's the color, including red, purple, and black, will cause an alkaline reaction in a type O's digestive tract. Melons of all types are alkaline, but contain very high mold, so they should be avoided. Type O's have an acidic intestinal tract, more acidic than others, so the alkalinity brings balance to type O's, and it will reduce the tendency for the formation of ulcers or other irritations. Not all alkaline fruits are good for type O's. So high acid fruits like strawberries, tangerines, and oranges should not be eaten. Each grapefruit in moderation, uh, eat it very sparsely because it does become alkaline after it is eaten. Blackberries can cause intestinal irritation and type O's are extremely sensitive to coconut and processed coconut oil. That does not necessarily include uh, extra virgin coconut oil, very different. Vegetable juices are a good choice because of their alkalinity. Some fruit juices such as apple and apple cider are very high in sugar. Pineapple juice is also very beneficial to the type O's because it prevents bloating and water retention. However, pineapple juice, again, is also very high in natural sugars, and black cherry juice is also very high in alkalinity and is very beneficial for blood type O's. So spices in general are a powerhouse of nutrition and health benefits. Kelp-based seasonings contain iodine that is essential to type O's and it counteracts their acidic gut. Kelp is high in fructose, in fucose, which protects your intestinal lining of the stomach. Kelp is an also effective regulator of metabolism for type O's and it's also a very good source for iodine. Corn sweeteners, high fructose corn syrup especially, are not acceptable under any circumstances, not just for O's, but for all blood types. Condiments like ketchup, mustard, and relish are not beneficial to O's, but should be used in moder for moder moderation. However, it is very important that you read the labels and make sure what you're buying does not have any chemical additives. Olive oil, lemon juice, unsweetened, and garlic are all good substitutes. Herbal teas are very powerful immune boosters, especially because of their ability to soothe the intestines. Peppermint, rosehip, parsley, and sarsaparilla uh, included. Uh, alfalfa, aloe, burdock, and corn silk soothe your intestines, but they will thin your blood, which can be a problem for type O's. Diabetics are accustomed to limited acceptable beverages, but type O's are even more limited. Seltzer water, tea, especially green tea, and club soda are the only good choices. Beer and wine should be used in severe moderation. While green tea is, has no special benefit for type O's, it does have many other beneficial effects on diabetes, so it should be used. Coffee drinkers should slowly reduce their consumption to the point where even to eliminating coffee altogether. Green tea is usually the best alternative. Type O's need to supplement their body with iodine, and that's why kelp is so good. Type O's should take certain, make certain that their supplements are free of wheat or yeast, which are common additives in supplements. Since type O's have a sluggish metabolism, 
<clears throat> vitamin B complex is going to be very important. The B complex is included in all good quality multivitamins. Some oral diabetic medications cause a B12 deficiency, which can be very serious. Diabetics are typically deficient in vitamin D, and so that should be supplemented as well. So a good quality multivitamin will have a daily requirement of vitamin K, which is required by the type O's. They also typically include calcium, which is needed by type O's to treat joint issues and arthritis. However, many of the multivitamin uh, supplements can be low on calcium, so make certain that it has 100% of the daily minimum requirement. If it doesn't, then you may need to supplement it independently. And again, that's 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams per day, uh, 1,200 if you're over the age of 70. So uh, grains and legumes, again, should be totally avoided by type O's. They're more prone to developing a pot belly than the others, and therefore that's a signal that a lot of inflammation is going on. Vitamin A is one of the vitamins commonly deficient in diabetics. Likewise, vitamin E may contribute to blood thinning tendencies. So you have to make your decisions accordingly. Type O diabetics are doubly prone to high stress reactions. They react immediately to stress. They are wired to produce sudden strong physical responses to stress. So vigorous physical exercise is highly advised uh, for diabetics, especially type O's. Vigorous exercise makes muscle tissue more acidic and increases the fat burning capacity. So type O's have lower levels of thyroid hormones because their system does not absorb iodine well. The sole purpose of iodine in the body is to regulate thyroid function. The thyroid hormones are made primarily of iodine. Muscle tissue might be slightly acidic in order to perform at ultimate levels and to remain lean. So slightly acidic muscle tissue will burn calories far more efficiently than alkaline. So now begins the listings of the foods. You'll note that each page for that particular blood type gives the beneficial, the neutral, and the detrimental food items for each of the blood types. And these will only be up for a short while because of time limitations, but you're more than welcome to stop the video as necessary in order to take notes. So thank you for your time, and uh, I'll see you in the next video series. Thank you.